Good morning. I'm Perry Floyd, chaplain and pastor, stuck in my home like most of us, and uh, like to talk to you today, my daily walk with God. Yesterday was uh, Sunday, and I thought I did a tremendous job of preaching God's Word, and kind of full of myself after church, I said to my wife as we were sitting down for lunch, I wonder how many great preachers there still are in America. And without missing a beat, my wife said, one less than you think. She was not, shall we say, generous or gracious with me. And I want to talk to you today about the G word, generous. Listen to this verse, Proverbs 11:25. A generous man will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Generous. The word generous in Hebrew is the word chanan. And it's used four more times in Proverbs about lending to the poor and being generous to others. And let's talk about being generous. Uh, the word generous, chanan, sometimes is translated in the Old Testament as gracious. And 17 times in the book of Psalms, the psalmist says, O oh God, be gracious unto me. Another way of translating that would be, O oh God, be generous unto me. In Exodus 34, when God described himself to Moses, he put Moses in the cleft of a rock, and he said, I'm the Lord, the Lord, the gracious, generous, and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love and abounding in faithfulness. And so, as we're practicing social distance today, I want to go out on a limb and encourage you in three ways to be generous. First of all, let's remember, God is generous. He's given me far more than I deserve. He's given me much more than I've ever earned. You too. You need to say today and live today like you are the recipient of a great and generous God. God is generous. And then the second thing is, when generous Jesus takes up residence in my heart, guess what happens? He becomes more and more generous in me and through me. When generous Jesus lives in you, you become a more generous person. We move away from stingy and towards generous. So let me ask, would the people that know you the best, would they describe you as generous or as stingy? Mm -hmm. Not a moocher, not always taking and never giving, and not a miser, clinging to what is mine. You know, you never see parents taking their small children and saying, now, honey, say this, mine, mine. You never have to train children to be self-centered. It's in their nature, and it comes out as they play with others, as the toys become not yours, but mine. And we got to grow out of that as followers of Jesus. Here's the third thing. Walking with Jesus means that I increase and I grow in my generosity. And I just want to tell you, as a person, I have morphed from being a stingy, selfish, spend it all on me, use it all on me, to becoming a generous and a gracious man. And the only reason I can say that is I've walked with Jesus for 48 years. And in those 48 years, he inside me has created more and more generosity. And so I want to talk about the three T's real quickly. Time, talents, and treasure. Yes, money. And I hope when I die that they put on my tombstone Psalm 112. Let me read Psalm 112, the first five verses to you. I want this to describe me, and by the way, you too. Good idea! Thank you. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord the man who finds great delight in his commands. His children will be mighty in the land. Each generation of the upright man will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright man, for those who are generous, gracious, compassionate, and righteous. And now verse 5. Good will come to the man who is generous, who lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. I want that 
to be the way people talk about me after I'm gone. Don't you? Well, when it comes to generosity, the very best New Testament passage, in my humble opinion, is 2 Corinthians chapter 9. In chapters 8 and 9, Paul is talking about taking an offering for the saints in Jerusalem. A famine had struck, and the Gentile churches are gathering under the apostles' leadership a huge offering of money to be taken to Jerusalem and given to the home church. It's a time of giving during a time of great need. Hmm. Sounds like today. We're living in a time of great need, and it's time for people like you and me to step up to the generosity plate and swing our bats with all our might to be givers of our time, our talents, and our treasure. Even while we're wearing masks, even while we're not getting within seis pies de another persona, listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11. Paul says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. No, he's using farming, a garden, as his metaphor for giving money. If you plant a few seeds, you'll get a few fruit. If you plant a lot of seeds, you will get a lot of fruit. The same applies as I give away my time, as I give away my abilities, my talents, and as I give away my money. Then he says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The word cheerful there in Greek is the word hilarious. We get our word hilarious from the Greek word cheerful. Then he says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that at all times, in all things, having all that you need, you will abound when every good work. And then he quotes, as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever, which is a quote back from Psalm 112 in the latter part of that chapter. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed, a.k.a. money, and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Verse 11. Pay close attention to verse 11. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Christian living is generous living. We should be known in our neighborhood, at our work, at our schools, wherever we live, as the most generous people because generous Jesus resides in our heart. My friend Bill Bice of Vineyard Pastor shared the four levels of giving, and I like what he said. There's first of all the occasional giver. Uh, every now and then, a uh, guy on a homeless street at the corner, uh, now and then. Level two, a regular giver. Somebody who gives no matter what it is, the amount or the percentage, just on a regular basis. That's a step up from occasional. His third level is a generous giver, a person who gives generously. And then the fourth and highest level is the sacrificial giver, the giver who gives until it hurts. Occasional, regular, generous, sacrificial. Which are you? Which am I? Would the people who know me the best say I'm a generous, sacrificial giver of my time, of my talents, and of my abilities? I want to pray 2 Corinthians 9-11 for me and for you today that we would be spreading the gospel many times not by preaching but by simply living out the generous lifestyle that God is. And so let's pray. 2 Corinthians 9-11. God, thank you that we'll be enriched in every way so that we can be generous on every occasion. And through our generosity, great thanksgiving to you, our God, will result. I pray for me and for us that we will live as generous people. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's your assignment. Look around. Anybody who's in need of your time, of your talent, of your money, today, this week, let's live out generous Jesus so the word generous 
when we're gone, will be used about us. I'm Perry with my hands full of treasure, of talent, and of time looking for a place to put it.